Hey there guys and welcome back to Pokemon Soul Silver. In the last episode we beat the Azalea Gym. We got second badge and now we're gonna move on towards town number three and look it's Dick again. Hey there Dick, been a while. Yes, Team Rockin has returned and I ran him straight out of town all by myself. I guess Kurt kinda helped, broke his back in the process. Minor detail. Okay Dick, let's battle. Ooh, a ghastly. Well, I'm so concerned. Although, I kinda wish Slowpoke knew a psychic move right about now. Oh, crap. Well, I am really glad he knows Water Gun now, because otherwise I wouldn't even be able to touch this ghastly. But let's go ahead and put him to sleep. He's probably gonna do the same thing to me. Or he's gonna pretty much attempt to kill himself. I actually like this. Makes it a lot easier for Slowpoke to get rid of it because... Oh! Oh, that's a critical hit. That's rather unimpressive. Come on, Slowpoke, step it up. Now yeah, the curse. It takes away a quarter of my HP, but I'm good with that. I'm not really counting on Slowpoke to beat any of his other Pokémon. Because she, Slowpoke sure as hell isn't going to be able to beat Bayleaf. And I think his other Pokémon is either Magnemite or Zubat. Anyway, Slope gets to level 12. Still no confusion. I think he gets that at like 14 or 15 or something, so that's still a little while away. Here comes Bayleaf. And I just realized that my team right now kind of has a major problem with gr with electric types for sure. Because all three of my Pokemon are weak to electric. And they don't really like grass types either. Spearow is the only one that isn't weak to grass, and Spearow ain't exactly the bulkiest thing ever. And also, that's what Peck did. And now we put up a Reflect, so... Spiro is gonna struggle here. I really hope he takes this Razor Leaf sorta well. Come on, Spiro. That's not that good. And I... I, I think Bayleaf may or may not yap it. No synthesis. Oh, this is gonna be a problem. He can heal himself way faster than I can damage him. This is not good. I just... Maybe a, a really... Spiro, come on. Pull off another one of your miraculous critical hits. That's what I need to win this. And I really need his Razor Leaves to not land a critical hit. Something which Razor Leaf tends to do. Poison Powder. Okay, that's good. There we go. Reflect is down. Now is your chance, Spiro. Damn it, Spiro. He's not putting up a new one. I still have a shot here. I just he, he can easily finish me off with another Razor Leaf now, and now he's just giving it away. Come on, Spiro. Damn it. Razor Leaf, come on, Spiro. Although, actually, I'm fine with this. I can probably... I think Croconaw is faster. Pretty sure Croconaw is faster, actually. So, Croconaw can just easily finish this off right now. Just go for Bite, and there we go. He does, he's not one of those pansies that uses super potions or whatever. So, I'm quite happy about that. I don't think Croconaw would have been able to beat Bayleaf one-on-one. -on -one. And his last Pokémon is Zubat. I guess he picks the Magnemite up at some later point. Go for a Rock Tomb. Should easily kill the Zubat in one hit, and get Croconaw to level 20. Wow, we actually survived. Guess that's that bold nature for you, Croconaw and your bad nature. But I'm really glad the Supersonic misses, they'll go for Scratch, finish it off, and beat Dick once again. And he always keeps bragging about how good he is and how he's gonna he's so much better than everyone else, and yet I keep handing him his ass on a platter every time. Oh sure, blame your Pokemon. Well then train them better. Or catch better Pokemon. I think as long as they're in a group. Well, that's kind of how evil people work. Especially evil mooks. They're not very tough on their own, but they might pose a threat in numbers. Alright, go and heal up, because Spiro's down, Croconaw... Actually, Croconaw was completely fine. That Slowpoke also had some health missing, so here we go, heal them all up. And then we can start our journey into Ilex Forest. Pretty much every Pokemon game has this early game forest region, which is generally not very interesting. You just go through it once, usually don't ever go there again. 
It might contain some rare Pokemon, but I'm pretty sure Ilex Forest doesn't. I guess we'll just run into the standard bug types. Maybe Rattata. Pretty sure Zubat shows up here at night, because Zubat is everywhere at night. Oh, Paris. Actually, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and catch this one. Because I know for a fact that a short moment from now we're gonna need something that can learn Cut. And Croconaw can learn Cut, but I really don't wanna have to learn, have to teach Cut to Croconaw, because Cut is a terrible move, it's an HM, it's hard to get rid of. Because the move the leader in the Johto region is not until, I think, Blackthorn City, which is down with the 8th gym, so you are, you don't have access to the move the leader for a long time. So, Paris can learn Cut, I'm fairly certain Paris can learn Rock Smash as well. So I guess Paris would make a decent HM slave at this point. And Slowpoke wakes up, tackle misses, come on Slowpoke. It's like you're not even trying. For another tackle then. Nice. And effects point activates again. Bloody hell. And paralysis too. I mean sleep goes away at some point. Paralysis, that's more annoying. Anyway, go ahead and catch the Paris. Shouldn't be that hard. But yeah, it's after the second gym and we're still running into level 5 Pokemon. Whereas your own Pokemon, at this point in the game, they're expected to be somewhere around 15 or higher. So that's just awful. There is so much... If you want to get your team to a decent level, there is so much grinding you have to do in the Johto games. It's ridiculous. I guess they kind of, maybe... They did alter the experience formula in later games, starting with black and white, so that if you beat a higher leveled opponent, you get more experience points. So it's easier to catch up, basically. But that's not quite there in these games yet. Anyway, we're going to teach Rock Smash to Paris and heal everyone up, heal Slowpoke. And we're going to run to Zubat, I told you those things were in here. During the daytime, you will only find Zubat in caves, but as soon as darkness falls, they are everywhere. The boss is going to be so angry to Farfetch, he cut trees and took off in the forest. Oh, uh, this is a fun little mini game. Basically, it's a kind of a puzzle, you have to go and. Oh! Oh, that's right, the Togepi egg. Completely forgot I still had that with me. Sure took its sweet time to hatch, though. Look, it's Togepi! And unlike in the original Gold and Silver, this Togepi is actually usable. Because this is not just any Togepi, it's a special Togepi. Oh, and Professor Elm's calling. I mean, actually, it was the right thing to do. Yes, I solve all people's problems. Uh, I guess I'll... Oh yeah, good to know. I've recorded quite far ahead in this game, but I haven't actually shown Togepi to Professor Elm yet. Maybe I should go and do that. Anyway, he knows the special move Extra Sensory, which is one of Togepi's egg moves that he doesn't learn through leveling up. It's a pretty damn strong psychic move, but the Togepi is level 1. At least in Gold and Silver he started out level 5. You know, he step on the twigs and the far-fetched will face that way. Then you just go around, because the far-fetched is apparently so stupid that he can't hear you walking right up behind him. And he, you can easily just catch him. Oh look, Oddish. Do Oddish's eyes really look like that? They look kind of weird in this particular sprite. So tiny. Pretty sure Oddish has bigger eyes than that. You know, I should probably stop putting Slowpoke in front of the party because Slowpoke makes it impossible to run away from wild Pokemon. Anyway, here's your Farfetch'd. Oh, there's another one. Why didn't you say that in the first place? I wonder where the hell that one is then. What do we have? Another Oddish. Such wild Pokemon variety. Well, at least we haven't run into like a Weedle or a Caterpie yet, so that's definitely surprising. I was expecting to be neck deep in those. What do we have here? Revive. Eh, could be worse. Could be an X something or a dire hit or whatever. Uh, okay. Oh, there he is. Okay, step on this one. And then go 
back down and catch him, I suppose. Another Paris. I already have one of those. And I don't plan on using it anyway, because Parasect is probably one of the worst fully evolved Pokemon there is. Literally nothing redeeming about Parasect, as far as I can recall. Oh, here we go. Oh. Just catch from... Oh, come on. Uh, how... Oh, actually, wait, 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 wait. Here we go. Uh, hang on. Oh, no, 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 I figured it out. Step on this one. Now we can catch him from behind. Yes, got him. Qua. That is exactly what a duck says. Kind of. Maybe ducks say that in Japan. What about me because I don't have a badge? Well, then, go out and get one. I mean, go and beat the Violet City Gym, it's not that hard. And he, did he actually name his far-fetched far and fetched? That's awful. Just, I hate nicknaming Pokemon because there are so many people who would either use the same stupid, overused nicknames for their Pokemon, or they just have completely nonsensical bullshit. I virtually never nickname a Pokemon. If anyone trades me a Pokemon, even if it's like an EV trained competitive Pokemon or something that has a nickname, I'm still getting rid of it or trading it for something else because I will refuse to use nicknamed Pokemon. It's just stupid. Anyway, we now have HM1 for our troubles, which is cut. And teach that to Paris. And now we can cut down trees. And this year, Ilex Forest Shrine, it's supposed to have something to do with like a Celebi event back in the day. Even in gold and silver, but they never did that for some reason. I think, actually, first time you were able to get Celebi in... Or anywhere outside of Japan was... I think a run one of Fire Red and Leaf Green came out. I think I have one of those 10th anniversary event Celebis somewhere. I think that was actually the first time non-Japanese people could get a Celebi. So yeah, it's a gold and silver Pokemon, but it wasn't obtainable in gold and silver. Unless you use like a cheating device or something. Bloody hell, Slowpoke. Just run away from the Zubat, it's not that hard. You're at more than twice his level. Uh, I should totally just put Spiro in front. Or hell, even Croconaw could probably outrun the Zubat. He was faster than that level 18 Bayleaf, so I'm pretty sure he can outrun level 5 Zubat. And all the while he's just draining Slowpoke's health and Slowpoke doesn't care. There we go, finally. Okay, just gonna go a slight detour down here, because this guy is interesting. Boom, causes an earthquake. And again. Why does he do that? What am I doing? I'm shooting trees using headbutt. Yes, this guy is in the forest headbutting trees for no particular reason. He probably just finds it amusing to go outside and smash his head into tree bark. And I don't know what he hopes to accomplish with it, but he can teach all your Pokemon to use Headbutt as well. And he will do that an indefinite amount of time, so... There is really no reason for you to not teach Headbutt to any Pokemon that can learn it at this point. Because for this point in the game, Headbutt is a pretty strong move. Especially if you teach it to like a normal type. So that they could stab as well. Spiro can't teach it because birds are too frail to headbutt trees, I guess. But Croconaw and Slowpoke can, and it sure as hell is better than Tackle and Scratch, so go right ahead. There we go, a couple powerful new moves. And also, you can use headbutt on any tree, basically, to l get a Pokemon from it. To make wild Pokemon show up, so that is pretty cool. And there are quite a few Pokemon you can only get in this way. I think Pineco is one of them, Heracross, Apom. I think that might be all of them. Anyway, headbutt the tree, see what we get. It is a Weedle. Yeah, because you totally need to go and headbutt trees to find those anywhere. And Slowpoke still manages to not outspeed it. Bloody hell, Slowpoke at least. Oh, come on. Just don't poison me, please. Pretty please. Oh, critical hit. Okay, I'm cool with critical hits. Just don't poison me. I don't want that to happen in the middle of the bloody forest. 
And I'm just gonna go ahead and put Spearow up front, because I'm getting pretty sick and tired of these wild Pokemon showing up and ruining my day. Oh, hello, little item there. I didn't notice you, kinda hidden behind the trees. Hell, the Pokemon game designers are better at hiding their secret items than the God of War game designers. Remember how easy it was to find all those red orb chests? Oh, hey there. Hey, we've seen you before in Violet City. Poor girls in Dark Ilex Forest. What, you remember from Violet City? There's probably a different one. I think there were like five of those. Hey, where are you going, Spearow? You're going to show me how to get out? You're such a smart Pokemon. Yes, Spearow is particularly smart. How does Spearow even know the way here? He's not from here. I don't think he's ever been here. Or do Pokemon have a natural sense of direction? And another oddish. At least have... If you're... At least have the courtesy to be shiny if you feel like intruding over and over again, oddish. What do we have here? Ether. Well, still better than one of those X things. And this tree. Kind of standing around. I think usually if there's a tree that's isolated like this, you have like a higher chance of getting rare Pokemon. Or nothing at all. Yeah, not every tree is guaranteed to give you a Pokemon every single time. Come on, Oddish. Level 6 again. So much grinding you'd have to do to get that thing caught up to the rest of your team. But still, if you want to use a grass type and you didn't pick Chikorita, Oddish is a way better choice than Bellsprout. Although, if you did catch a Bellsprout earlier in the game, it's probably at a way higher level than that Oddish would be right about now. And there's the exit. It's not a particularly big forest. But at least we made our way through it now. And hey, look, it's a Butterfree over there. A forest from across time. It must be a grass type Pokemon. Well, Celebi is a grass and psychic type, alright. And we talk to her, and she gives you the TM for Taunt, which is not the best move to use in game, but in competitive battling has its uses. Anyway, in the next episode of Pokemon Soul Silver, we will go to Goldenrod City and do stuff because it's a really big place. Thanks for watching, bye bye.